I'ma crush Welcome it. to Unsung. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. As we sat down to put Unsung 66 together for you, Light Up Night was approaching. We were inspired as the city was prepping to put on its best for the holidays, so we put together a show with stories that inspire and made us feel all warm inside. From a child receiving their first bike thanks to Variety, to students that are working to make their schools a better place, to a group of people that travel halfway around the world to help orphans have a better life. Even the city got in on the act with a new way of hiring, but first, as always, let's take a look at the latest news from our local nonprofits. The first phase of a major program began last week to recruit a senior management team to help lead Pittsburgh Mayor-elect Bill Peduta's administration with the posting of key jobs on the Pittsburgh Foundation's specially created website, TalentCity.com. A total of 30 job descriptions were posted on the site, covering up to 43 positions in the areas of the mayor's office, finance and administration, public safety and urban affairs, and planning and innovation, each offering annual salaries of between sixty dollars and $106,000. The deadline for these applications for all of these positions is December 15th. Under the Talent City program, which was launched by the Foundation in partnership with the University of Pittsburgh's Institute of Politics. All applicants for the posted positions will be screened by one of three specialized bipartisan selection committees and interviews will be conducted by human resources consultants. Overseeing the selection process is a 10-member committee, representative of the local community and co-chaired by Marion Gare, Vice President External Affairs at Point Park University, Greg Jordan, General Counsel with PNC Financial Services, and local business entrepreneur Greg Spencer, Grant Oliphant, President and CEO of the Pittsburgh Foundation, and Mary-elect Bill Peduto explain more about Talent City. We have to look department by department. Who's going to implement all these ideas? Who's going to be able to make sure that people are getting services that are not only efficient and effective, but equitable? so that the same delivery of services are happening no matter in what neighborhood you live. When Mayor-elect Peduto was lamenting what he saw as a deeply ingrained culture of hiring that um, tended towards patronage and towards hiring based on uh, who people knew and what, um, as opposed to skills and expertise that they could bring to the city. The criticism that came back, well, he's just trying to get rid of those people so he can put his own people in, is forever gone. It's no more a valid argument. We're opening up all of those positions in the top positions to anybody who has the talent to replace them. And I understand that this city has been mired in that old way of thinking for so long that for some they can't open their mind to the possibility that it wouldn't be about that but about giving people the opportunity to leave with some respect when they leave their job and at the same time open up these positions to the best talent that we can find to build that new Pittsburgh. A good friend called Kevin Acklin, my chief of staff, and said, you guys are crazy. You're giving away all your power. And like I said when I first announced this, and Kevin said to me, anytime you can trade talent for power, I'll take that trade. If you're interested in applying for a position in city government, please submit your application to the address on your screen. Eight children zip down the hallway and outside on their first bike ride. It's a feeling that most get to experience, the joy and freedom of having your own bike. But why is this a story, you ask? Well, these are adaptive bikes, specially built for these children with disability. And there was not a dry eye in the house as they sped away with huge smiles on their faces. Unsung takes you to Westmoreland County for the story. Um, and I think for a lot of the kids, who have disabilities, there's so many things their family tells us they can't do. So to be able to have something they can do, the pride they have in themselves is overwhelming. And I don't think that should be minimized. Every child wants to feel proud of what they do. It begins to change a community because like a couple educators spoke to me and said, well, couldn't we do this in our schools? And like, sure, sure, and then, you know, Kids with disabilities begin to be looked at as kids first. That'd be a big goal of mine. You know, if they could be seen as kids first, you know, we all have differences. We all have challenges, no matter what it is. There are currently 90 bikes available. So if you know of a child or family that could use this special gift, or if you would like to sponsor a bike for a future child, please visit 
verietypittsburgh.org for more information. 1,706 students from every Pittsburgh public high school supported Teen Block's call for a student bill of rights, and students aren't the only ones who want to see a change in Pittsburgh public schools. Unsung went to the students to find out more about the Student Bill of Rights. Thanks, Anthony. My name is Marcus Motley, and I'm here at Team Block, and me and my fellow friend are going to talk to you about the Student Bill of Rights. A Plus Schools is Pittsburgh's community advocate. It's an independent nonprofit organization for the improvement in Pittsburgh public schools. Uh, another program that we have is Teen Block, which is a program uh, that brings together high school students from across the city. They meet every week and their goal is essentially uh, to organize with adult leaders to uh, raise their voice and the voices of their peers in the city uh, in order to uh, basically improve their situations and the situations of their peers. Start off by um, what would you like to change in schools? And so um, the whole group came up with a list of laundry list of different things that we'd like to see change in our schools. And then we saw that there was um, some uh, replicas uh, between, uh, between different Things, so we made categories out of them and out of those categories we came up with we wanted to have 10 to mirror the Bill of Rights in the Constitution so we decided to have 10 rights that we think that all students should have inside and outside of the classroom but I think students need a Bill of Rights because they never really get our perspective on things you hear from the teachers you hear from parents and other adults in the community but you never really get the kids point of view from it what we hope to accomplish with this is to um get it into the school code of conduct and to really get um, each school to ratify it so that this is a living document that does affect students on a daily basis. We're asking for the right to like effective teachers, that teachers that will like change their teaching styles or like ensure that every student is like taught to their need so that like every student can excel academically and also make sure that every student has all the resources that they need to excel, like calculators, books, and all that, so that it'll um, make the learning experience easier for them. Some of the things we're asking for in the Student Bill of Rights are to have effective transportation, to have um, freedom of voice and speech, so just general things that we feel that um, students are entitled to, so not necessarily um, rule changes about cell phones and things like that, but more basic things that as students we feel that we deserve to further our education. Also we're asking for basically support when we go to school because there's a lot of times that there are some situations that need to be taken care of and handled or that maybe one time that you're not feeling so great that you want to just talk to a teacher maybe or talk to somebody that you know will have your back. So right in our campaign we are done with the ratification. So originally we wanted one fourth of the student uh, whole population of Pittsburgh Public School high school students and so that was around 1,600 and um, our final number was around 1,700 students. So right now we are trying to make uh, present the student bill rights formally to the Board of Education, the nine members, and then um, have them vote on it. Um, we're hoping in February to have a board tap and, and uh, allow for them to vote to ratify the student bill rights. Um, I know from my own experience when um, I went to go and get votes for this, um, a lot of students were really excited. They were happy that there's somebody out there who is trying to make um, these changes that they see need to be made. And um, in general, my peers, um, they really support it. You can get involved with A-plus schools in so many different ways. We are on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we also have a page. Feel free to come like it. You can like the A-plus schools page, the Teen Block page, the MGR Youth Empowerment page, and follow all of those uh, entities on Facebook and Twitter. And um, you can also get in touch with any of the staff members from A-plus schools. Our phone numbers and email addresses are on our website at www.aplusschools.org. Time for you to get involved. You can sign their ballot at the address on your screen. Unsung went to the appropriately sounding Holiday Park neighborhood to find out more about the James Connection that extends Pittsburgh's generosity to children in India. The orphanage is located in the town of Chirachanpur, which is in the state of Manipur, and that is way up in the northeastern section of India. It's actually east of Bangladesh. He uh, had done uh, much traveling in India, uh, working with missionaries there, and I saw many uh, orphans. There are over 35 million orphans in India, and the need was so obvious that I decided that I would like to do something. We opened the orphanage 
uh, with 60 children. Since then, we have expanded uh, that building, which has now become the boys' dormitory, added another multi-purpose building, which also includes the girls' dormitory, the dining hall, the kitchen, and infirmary, so that we have two large buildings and three smaller buildings, and we house 155 children. The James Connection is actually a corporation formed in Pennsylvania. It is qualified under the Internal Revenue Code as a 501c3 charity. We also formed the James Connection Trust in India under the India Trust Act, and it's uh, the charity in India. And the James Connection Trust actually is the owner of the land where the orphanage is located. The impact of uh, Angel's Place is, is in some cases quite profound. Every one of these children has a terrible story. Every one of them came to us because of some tragedy in their family. They don't have parents. They don't have adult supervision. Orphanages are perhaps not quite as desirable as finding foster homes. Orphanages in India are almost like emergency wards at, at hospitals. Um, the children that come to us in many cases are in danger for their very lives. Uh, we've had two children die from AIDS. Uh, we've had another one die from leukemia. <clears throat> we just took in, for instance, this year, uh, 12 uh, girls because we had space in our girls' dormitory to, to uh, house them. And they, when they come in, you'd be impressed by how emaciated they are and how undernourished. And, uh, so when they come to us, they may have missed uh, one or two or three years of school. So uh, when you get them to a point where they're healthy and they have enough energy, they become better students. You can sponsor a child. Uh, annual sponsorship is uh, $420 a year, $35 a month. You get to um, write to the child. They, the child can write to you. Um, you will be able to feed this child and clothe it, give it clothing, and this child gets to go to school. We've had now three children have graduated from Angel's Place. That is, they have stayed with us long enough to graduate from the equivalent of high school. And they've all three gone on to college. Now, we realize that all of our children are not going to go on to college. We now have seven of our children who are coming along behind them that have all qualified under state examinations. But we're also in a capital campaign right now, uh, attempting to expand the facilities for the better use for the kids. Um, both to uh, uh, hopefully add some additional children over time, but also to give them better facilities, uh, more recreational activities, and more indoor uh, space for them. Um, we are also hoping to put solar panels into the facility. Uh, tonight, uh, I should say, in the evenings, um, the power goes off quite often at about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, comes back on in the morning, um, and solar powers will, panels would allow them the opportunity to uh, maintain power. The easiest thing is to go to jamesconnection.org. Uh, that's the website, and that describes the history and the details, and it also shows how you can donate. You can donate actually right directly from that site. That's the easiest way. Have you ever been to a tweet up? Well, here's a reason you should go. For the second time, Pittsburgh Tweet Up will hold a dough raiser at Uno Chicago Grill in the waterfront. The dough raiser on December 12th at 6 p.m. will benefit Community Human Services Corporation. Specifically, it will benefit the Holiday Gift Project. Here's what you can do. You can attend the tweet up and patronize Uno Chicago Grill. Up to 20% of non-alcoholic or non-gift card sales will benefit the CHS. You can visit Uno Chicago Grill anytime during the day, December 12th, take out or dine in. Or you can bring a $25 gift card to donate to the Holiday Gift Project. With your $25 gift card or cash donation, you will receive five raffle tickets to drop in the basket of your choice. Make sure you bring the certificate so your meal benefits CHS. Visit these links for just one certificate or four on the same page for you to share. You can also donate to the project at Crowdosaurus at the address on your screen. Nobody's leaving. Nobody's walking out on this fun, old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no. We're all in this together. We've all been there. The Hollywood Theater has added subtitles over National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation that will come up karaoke style 
with text showing up on the screen before the characters say your favorite lines. This is the one time you will be encouraged to talk during the movie. In addition to yelling at the screen, they will have all sorts of super fun activities to make you happy, including an ugly holiday sweater contest. It's more fun than a membership to the Jelly of the Month Club, and it's at the Hollywood Theater in Dormont on December 14th at 9 p.m. You can visit thehollywooddormont.org for more information. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles during our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. Be sure to check out our previous episodes and our unsung uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org as well as video and audio versions on iTunes and YouTube. As always, thank you for watching Unsung. Please be sure to share it with your friends. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'm a crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.